Hey guys, I have a quick tutorial showing you how to use iPhone or any smartphone footage and add visual effects to it. Making VFX shots is just a fun thing to do and oftentimes people think you need expensive cameras or expensive gear to do it, but that's not the case. You just need your program and an iPhone. So I'm at home now and I will just shoot my footage from here. It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day. I'm gonna place it at 4K and then shoot my video. There we go. And now let's go to the editing room. I just opened up Premiere Pro and when we look at the sample footage, we have a snowy looking scenery, uh, but it's a little boring. We want to add more to the scene and make a cool establishing shot. We will recreate the same shot I showed you here and go step by step how to add all these layers and mask out the trees and everything. I recently moved to a new place, so the setup is a little bit different. It's just I'm um, exploring a bit on this platform and finding new ways to create tutorials for you guys. And since this channel is not monetized or anything like that, I'm just a regular dude creating videos for clients and then on the side I do this kind of stuff. To open up this footage in After Effects, we will alt click on footage, drag it above it, and then right click and replace with After Effects composition. Now we have our composition and After Effects. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scrub through the footage and select a frame that we can work with to add our VFX element to this. So let's say we are happy with this frame and here we want to add our uh, mountains. Now first click on this snapshot icon here and take a snapshot. Then go to composition, save frame as Photoshop layers. Then save it to your desired location. In Photoshop, we have our still image here and here we will add our matte painting. A matte painting is a technique used in the VFX world where we add different layers of images and stitch them together and composite them together to make it look like a different world, a different scene. To generate these mountains in the background, we will go to our lasso tool. We can hold click and then here lasso. We first need to create a clean plate and then add the mountains on top of it. So select this with the lasso tool. And then use generative fill. Click generate. Agree. And now it's generating the environment with AI. You can see we have a clean plate. There are different versions, but we will use the first one. I want to get rid of these trees as well. Flatten out the scene a little bit more here. So let's generate once more. Okay, I'm really happy with this. And now let's add our mountains. I will select a portion here. And select the foreground as well as the background then use generative fill and now let's type in a prompt generate and now photoshop will do the work let's say you're not happy with the result the first time you can generate the fill anytime you want just do it over and over again until you have something that looks very nice and convincing now let's go over here and select another portion the good thing about Photoshop and AI it will look at the lighting of your environment and then replicate the lighting in your um, selected portion here. Let's hit generate. I'm gonna go with this one here. Select this portion. And let's just hit generate to see what it's gonna do. And now it's flattened out the whole terrain, which is not bad, but I want to have it more slowy, snowy, generate. Now you can clearly see it's still AI generated, but we're gonna composite it in After Effects and only use the background portion here as the background layer. We're gonna do one more thing before we go into After Effects. Select this and duplicate it and then merge layers. Now this image is merged. Let's deselect all the other layers. We're gonna go to our crop tool here and extend the edges. 
because our footage is spanning from left to right. And then we go to our selection, select the footage, right click, select inverse. Now it's gonna take those two portions and hit generate a fill again. There we go, just like magic. And when you hit save, it will override the same file as the snapshot we made. I have a full VFX masterclass where I go in depth and show you guys how to add CGI elements to your live action footage. Get 40% off with the link in the description or use the coupon code HOLIDAYVFX. Now let's get back to the video. Back in After Effects, first import your matte painting. Hit import, merge all layers, hit OK. Add this to your composition and we have our scenery right here. But first let's 3D track our camera because as you can see we have a moving camera here and this needs to be 3D tracked of course. To do this go to the effects and presets panel here and then type in 3D camera tracker. You can also add it with footage and then tracker track camera. And now After Effects will analyze all the frames and 3D track your scene. When the tracker is done calculating, we can go to the 3D camera tracker, adjust the track point size, and now we have an overview of all our 3D tracks. The best way I found to 3D solve our camera is to select all these points here in the foreground as well as the background, and then right click, create 400 nulls and camera. Make sure your main layer is locked and then we can select all our individual points in 3D space. Let's select the first one, drag it down and select the last one hitting shift. Go to this button and select it. And now it will hide all these nulls when you select this icon. Then it's not shown in your composition and it's not all over the place. Unhide your matte painting again and make sure it's a 3D layer. We want this layer far in the background. So we can go to our active camera and select the top view here. Now we can see all our nulls. And then when we select our matte painting, this is where it stands in 3D space. Now it's way in the foreground. We don't want this, we want it back. So select the Z axis and select it here and go back. When you hit P on the keyboard, you go to position, let's say shortcut, and now we can hit 15,000 here. So it's far in the background and uh, select our active camera again. And now scale this image up. You can also go to S scale it up this way and now clean up the rotation so it's looking directly at the camera select your matte painting and then go to the mask rectangle tool then select this portion hit m on the keyboard and then f for feather then feather out the edges then adjust the mat where needed but don't go too far Otherwise, you're going to see the edge of your image. The image is blending much better with our sky now. Our foreground element with the trees are not masked out yet. Let's select our footage again, duplicate it and place it on top of the matte painting. Then rename this to matte. And now we will add different effects to our footage to make a matte for our foreground element. Go to effects and presets and type in black and white for our first one and then apply it to our matte layer. In the black and white effect we can add blue and then we extract the blue channel. I'm watching the edges here of the tree line so we have a good matte which we can extract from Add another effect called curves and apply it. Then the black level and dragging it to the right here, we can add more black. And here we can add more white. 
and now we can use this as our matte layer. The next step is duplicating our footage again, place it on top of our matte layer, pick whip, select the matte, let's change the luma matte and then invert it and now we used our matte. I want to add a little bit more haze in the background. To do this let's go back to our matte layer and now add another mask on the bottom and this mask we will subtract and then feather it out again. When you drag this mask up now we can create a sort of haze effect. So we duplicate our footage once more a black and white effect and let's call this snow. Now in our green channel I want to amplify this and the same for the blue and any other color. Then add another curve effect. So add more contrast where needed and this will represent the snow. When you go to the blending mode and set it to lighten it will blend on top of it. Go to your track mat and select your mat again. Switch to luma mat and then invert it and we have a snow layer. Make sure it's subtle and don't overdo it because otherwise you will see it's a filter on top of the footage. Now here is a quick before and after. This is before and then after. Go to your mask of your foreground elements and then the hue saturation effect. Let's apply this and tone down saturation a tiny bit the metric color and then go to curves we want to desaturate this red color on the houses here so let's go to hue and saturation select this and then tone it down the only thing left to do here is to add some overlay effects to really sell the shot this could be snow overlays haze or anything like that we can also apply our grading here. I will add some snow elements from Action VFX. There are two main elements we're gonna use. We're gonna use the windy snow close to the camera. Also snow that is far from the camera. Now make all of these layers a 3D layer. And let's say we want to add snow elements that are this far away from the camera. Then we can Navigate to this track null and copy the position, paste it on our snow layers. So paste it, then scale it up, adjust the rotation. And when we go to this mask, ellipse tool, and control click on this, we have a mask. We can feather this out. Then we can set the blending mode for these layers to screen. And add our close layer. Go to the top view. And place it closer to the camera. And rotate it towards the camera. I'm pressing R on the keyboard to rotate. Here you can be really creative and place your own elements like you want it. Whatever looks better for you, you can add this and fine tune where you want it to. Make sure all those layers are on the top of the composition. One thing we need to keep in mind here is our foreground wall here. We need to roto out this element because otherwise our snow will be in front of it. So let's duplicate our main footage again. Let's call this Roto Wall. And then with our Roto Brush tool here, we can select this, double click on the footage. And now let's go to our first frame here. And then select this with the brush. You can go frame by frame and adjust where needed. Or you can drag your mouse and let it render and adjust the frames if there are any uh, imperfections. 
Now let's go ahead and freeze this. We'll render out all the frames so we have a faster preview. Once you're happy with the final results, you can add your final color grading and little imperfections such as film grade to make the VFX shot blend in much better and uh, have a cool cinematic shot. This will probably be the last tutorial I will make in Adobe products such as After Effects and uh, Premiere Pro. That's because I want to change to DaVinci Resolve and Fusion and do everything in those programs because these programs are free and uh, you're not paying a membership or anything like that. It's just better for the overall community and uh, I don't want to pay $50 a month <laughs> for a program and you guys probably don't want to do the same. So I will switch over and do all my tutorials and content with the new programs. With that said, I hope this video was still helpful to see all the different techniques used uh, to create a VFX shot like this. I think it's probably the same in any program. It's just a different workflow, different way of working. Now, thank you guys for watching and see you on the next one. Peace.